it funds priorities submitted. Yeah, just say aye. Okay, just aye. Great, aye. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was Senator Dianne Feinstein last month when she was told to say aye by a fellow Democrat at a committee meeting. She was trying to give a speech instead of simply voting. Now, new reports that Feinstein has given power of attorney to her daughter as the senator faces legal battles over her late husband's trust. And joining us now to discuss this is Benjamin Oreskes, political reporter for the Los Angeles Times. Also with us, our friend Johanna Masca, News Nation contributor and CEO of the Global Situation Room. Okay, first to you, Benjamin. When we hear about people giving power of attorney, elderly people giving power of attorney to their children, it means basically one thing to most of us, that they are having problems keeping up mentally with their mental acuity. What's the case here? That is certainly one possibility. Uh, you know, we reported last month uh, that uh, Senator Feinstein has uh, sort of filed several lawsuits in California and San Francisco to help wrest control over certain parts of her late husband's estate from her stepkids. Uh, and those lawsuits were filed by her daughter, who happens to be a lawyer and has power of attorney over her. You know, I spoke to several uh, like estate lawyers who are not involved in this uh, litigation who said, yes, it could mean uh, that she's incapacitated and can't make these decisions. Uh, and given the reporting and videos and uh, you know, photos we've all seen that that certainly is a possibility. But but there are other reasons to do this. Uh, you know, she needs to be in California to do some of this uh, litigating. She's in D.C. Yeah. Um, and, and not all power of attorney is a complete control over all assets. Uh, there are limited powers of attorney. Uh, there are ones that kind of go into effect and then sunset. Uh, again, her office uh, wouldn't talk about this. So there's a lot of questions that remain unanswered because they won't talk about it. Yeah, and you were one of the first to, to report about some of her health challenges, uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct, Benjamin. What is the status now, as you understand it, about how she's doing and her fre the frequency? After all, she's not running for re-election. There's an election year coming up. There's not going to be a lot of days the Senate is in. Uh, do you expect her to be here in Washington for a significant amount of time, or, or you know, what's the feeling there? So just to remind your listeners, she was uh, absent for several months because of a case of shingles uh, that had sort of pretty severe side effects, something called encephalitis, which is swelling of the brain. Uh, she was absent sort of until about mid-May, starting in February. Uh, and then she returned to Washington. Uh, she was very frail. She was struggling to walk. She used a wheelchair. And she also sort of had trouble kind of doing the work of a senator. Uh, he didn't appear to realize that she had been gone in one interview that I had with her. Yeah. Um, I would also say that her health improved. She started to look better, look more vi vital, more vibrant. Um, she, she has now returned to California during the summer recess, so they'll be out of session until I think September. Um, but to your point, she is not doing what normal senators do, which is lots of public events, public appearances. Just this week in San Francisco, she missed another one, something that she always goes to. So you are right to say that she is uh, being a senator different than, say, uh, her yeah. counterpart, Alex Padilla. Uh, and it is a reflection of how old she is and how diminished she is right now. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.